Now, just to recap, for the iPhone sequence, what we want to do is have a button here, and the button is going to capture today's date as a string and put it somewhere inside this view controller, the main view controller. Then we have a segue that's drawn in the storyboard for the template, and that will be the transition, or segue as we call it, from the main view controller to the flip side view controller. And the type of transition is going to be a flip, so it appears to turn this view controller over, and this one is on the back. And that is in the template, as is the info button, which triggers it all, and the done button, which flips it in the reverse side. So this button is going to have to somehow get its value into this field. And the standard way of doing that is for this button to perform an action like get today's date as a string and put it inside a property of this view controller. Then the segue is in an iOS storyboard, the one object that knows about the destination view controller and the initial view controller. So this is the magic moment when I'm able to access the stored today's date string over here and put it into the text field over here. And because there's a small bit of typing involved, I've already typed in the code so we can review it. Basically, we're going to use the button here to put today's date as a string over here. Then in the segue, we are going to take that string out of here and put it into the text field because the segue is what knows about both of those view controllers. What do we need? We need in the main view controller a property called data string, which is where we are going to place that value. In the .m file, we have the show me action that was already created, and I put one line of code into it, and I set nsdate type converted to a string using the description, and I put that into self.datastring. Now I can come up here and look at prepare for segue. Prepare for segue is the method that you always overwrite. It's the one that knows about the destination view controller and the source view controller. So I've added to the template code down here an else statement because the template only works for iPad. So if we have an iPhone, what we're doing is we're picking up the destination view controller, which is a flip side view controller, and setting its data string to this object data string. So that's what we have to do to move the data over there. Now all we have to do is display it. So I'm coming out of prepare for segue, which moves the data of the string of today's date into the flip side view controller data string property. I have prepared the flip side view controller data string property that's already typed here. And now I just have to get the last mile from that property into the text field. And what I do is to use a very, very common method, view will appear. This is a framework method that you use frequently. It's written in Objective-C, but it's not part of the language. So we'll skip over all of the things that surround it, except for the language. Now I have view will appear for the flip side view controller. I can look at the text field, set the text attribute to self.datastring. And this is how I get the data. The today's date string was created in the action that was fired by clicking the button in the main view controller. That's where we get the data string. In prepare for segue, we move that string into the flip side view controller data string. Then it sits there until view will appear happens, and then we put it into the text field. And this is actually a very, very common pattern of how you get data from one view controller to the next. So let's see what happens when we actually run this. We're in the simulator. What is going to happen behind the scenes is today's date is retrieved and converted to a string inside the main view controller. Then we click here on the segue, and that is going to move that string into the flip side view controller. And then when view will appear occurs, then we've got the string in the field. So you can see this is a little more complicated than the iPad version, where the button and the field are together in the same view controller. I deliberately did it this way because this is common in iPhone, and we did it the easy way in iPad. Here we do it a little bit more difficult. You'll use both of these techniques frequently.